Joining us now is Paul Molshine, our friend from the Star Ledger, great columnist. Uh, hey, Paul, how are you, sir? Hey, how you doing? I'm fine. All right, so um, what do you make of uh, the uh, announcement of the report, the whole shebang, as they say? Well, you know, the first thing that struck me was uh, I didn't get the email till about 10.30. It takes me about an hour to get to Trenton. Jumped in the car that there was a press conference. I get to Trenton, and I find out the press conference is in Manhattan. Oh, <laughs> you know? no. And, you know, I'm thinking, wait a minute. You know, don't they even have enough respect? You know, I'm like the old Rodney Dangerfield line. We don't get no respect. Right, you know? for New Jersey, yeah. It's like, oh, you know, you Jersey people, we don't have to come see you. You come see us. And, you know, and that's kind of what really was well, going Well, I'll, I'll tell you why that's bogus on its face, because I, and I, I assume you're a New Jersey resident, we paid for that uh, lawyer and that report and that whole thing. Yeah, you know, and I mean, and when you look at this thing, the Jersey drivers were the ones who didn't get no respect from Christie. I mean, you know, as you know, that was the Jersey locals who used those lanes. And as court, the through lanes have much more interstate traffic. Right. And if that study was, even if it was legit, it was, gee, how do we screw the locals to help the out-of-staters, which makes no sense. You know, of course, it wasn't legit. But Christie, I mean, Christie was in, his, in this cover-up right till the end, and he almost pulled it off. Um, the, the email leaked on January 8th. By January 14th, the committee would have lost its subpoena power. So he was just trying to, you know, eke out run out the clock on this thing, and unfortunately it caught up with them. And that, this thing, it's unbelievable. How can you spend a million dollars on a, a study for a guy who just does a PR job for you? I mean... All right, so, so, you, so tell me what you find uh, flawed in this report. Well, just about everything. I mean, it, the whole thing reads like a press release. It doesn't read like a, you know, an honest report into what happened here. It reads like, for example, there is no evidence. It has this. Christie didn't participate in the cover-up, right? Well, I was at the December two press conference where he made that joke. I'm the guy who worked the cones, right? And then he said, "I'm soft." That Fort Lee has three lanes dedicated to it. Now that was the spin that was going out there. The idea that that they were trying to put out was that Fort Lee somehow benefited from having every commuter in North Jersey coming through its town every morning. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, Murray Sabrin, the guy's running for uh, Senate, he lives right by there. And I mean, what they do, what they, everybody, everybody brought out their garage sale items and sold them? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, this is, oh, it's great having all these people drive by my door every day and stop dead and block my driveway and all, you know. I mean, the spin that this was somehow benefiting Fort Lee just was absolute nonsense, and it was it was a net negative for Fort Lee, and obviously they're trying to punish Fort Lee. And here was Christie pushing this ridiculous line that he kept pushing right up till the end that this could have been a legitimate traffic study. When there's three lanes there, two were Easy Pass, one was Combined Cash and Easy Pass. Now you can imagine Easy Pass, as you know, drivers get through pretty quick, but when you get to that cash lane. One guy is fumbling in his wallet. Oh, man, I, don't know, right. I thought I had a 20 in here, right? That guy can stop the entire commute for a minute, you know? And, yeah, absolutely. And that's exactly what happened, you know? Absolutely. All right, so, so I mean, uh, to me, one of the, uh, the, the flaws of this whole thing is, um, without having read the whole thing and, and, and uh, being able to agree with you or disagree with you that it reads like a press release, um, they didn't talk to a lot of the key participants in this. Right. I mean, obviously, they couldn't talk to Kelly. Right. Or the, or and, the Port Authority people, correct? Uh, yeah, none of the people who really matter talk to them. And uh, so they, it really doesn't tell us anything we didn't know. So what was the point of spending that million dollars when I think what he's trying to do, and it's a smart idea, is put this out there and so he can start having press conferences. And then he can say, well, look, read the report. It says this. It says that. And then if he's really lucky, you know how the U.S. attorneys, when they look at these things, they don't write a report. They either indict or don't indict. So if the U.S. attorney were to indict a couple of the other people, all they would do is prosecute them. They would not give an, a sweeping report. So he could then say, this is the only legal record here. Here it is. This is what the legal record is. And as for the U.S. Attorney's Office, 
I was exonerated. But, of course, I don't think he's fooling anybody because everybody's going, come on. <laughs> All right, so you, you believe that he covered it up. Do you believe that he was in on it from the beginning, knew about it before and during and or during? Do you believe that? I don't think he did, and I think that's why he set that bar real low. He kept saying, I, as long as I didn't know about it in advance, I'm off the hook, which to me doesn't satisfy me at all because having been at that press conference and having him spin me, and, and I trusted him, you know, at that December 2nd press conference, um, you know, that's, you know, he wanted to set the bar very low. As long as I didn't know about it in advance, I'm off the hook. Right. Well, what about your buddy David Sampson, right. who went after Pat Foy for straightening this out? What about all your appointees, instead of standing up for the Jersey drivers, tried to go after the New York guy who stopped this ridiculous thing? So, you know, and his comments were all, were all that, it, um, you know, intended to get him over that January 14th deadline. And so to that degree, now it's not a federal crime to spin, you know, a story like this. And I don't think it should be prosecuted. I, I don't I don't think any of this should really rise to the level of anything other than dirty tricks. But all right. Know, so do you feel do, uh, do you feel uh, not to interrupt? We have two minutes left, Paul, and I really appreciate your time on this busy day. Um, do you think that Bridget Kelly, I mean, has anything on Christie, do you think um, the, 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 his former so-called childhood friend from the Port Authority, uh, whose name escapes me at the top of my head, does he have Warping. anything? Right. They, they, they want immunity. If they get that immunity, do they have anything you think that will be harmful to Christie? As a betting man, if I was a betting man, I'd say yes. I think there's some really great stuff out there, and this scandal is going to be super great. Like what? Give me, give me an example. If you, don't think he knew, if you don't think he knew about it before, then what could be so great? Just give me like a quickie that you think might in your mind. Well, the, the thing with Kelly is they intimated she had an affair with Steppy and the campaign manager, and they broke up. Something is going on there. But Kelly herself would not have had a motive to go after the mayor. So that's the big unanswered question, and I have no idea what the answer is, but I certainly can't see Kelly herself coming up with this grudge against Sokolich. So that's the single giant unanswered question. And the mayor Who himself said he never, he never heard from Christie's office. Then he changed his tune and said, yeah, he did. So I don't know what's going on there either. Neither do I. Yeah, all it's right. Great, well, but, but the speculation is, uh, is interesting. Thank you, Paul. Really appreciate your time, sir. Thanks a lot. My pleasure. Paul Molshine, ladies and gentlemen, the Star Ledger, uh, columnist at the Star Ledger. I, look, I, I think I think Christie has played this masterfully. I think any objective media would say, look, Christie took responsibility. He fired people. He's outraged. And uh, what does Obama say about the IRS? There's no scandal here. What do they say about the Democrats say about Benghazi? There's no scandal here. Um, when obviously there is. And they're both much worse than the bridge lane closings. So I think he has a, a winning issue here, actually. We're coming back with uh, Paul Callen, CNN legal analyst on The Steve Molesberg Show. We don't just talk about the news. We talk to those making news. This is The Steve Molesberg Show.